When I got the Bells of Steel Blitz Manual treadmill in, I was really excited because out of the box, I could tell the build quality was much higher than on my Assault Runner Elites, but then I ran on it for about four minutes and decided I can hate this thing. But hear me out because our relationship is a bit complicated and it might have been my expectations that were the problem. There's a lot to like about this thing, not only because of its upgraded build quality with bells using twice the bearings to keep the belt moving smoothly, its upgraded belt slats and an overall sturdier build, but it's also a more versatile piece of equipment with its ability to change resistance and because it mimics a lot of the functionality a sled has. My original issue is I was comparing this to the wrong thing, but I've still graciously provided affiliate links to both these in the description if you're interested. This isn't an upgraded Assault Runner Elite, it's a budget techno gym. And I know you're probably thinking, in what world is $5,000 budget? Well, show your wife techno gym's $12,000 price tag and she's still probably not gonna let you get this, but it's worth a shot. So what is this thing? This is Bell's figuring out how to make cardio worse. If you've ever used the Devil's Bicycle, a fan bike, and thought, wow, this is terrible. Well, if that fan bike and a treadmill had a baby, this would be it. I hate it because it makes me feel like I'm moving like an elderly woman who just had two knee surgeries. Allow me to explain that while I also attempt to answer all the questions we got about this thing on our Instagram. But first, let me thank Bells for sending me this to review because nothing gets me more excited than cardio. This is more difficult to run on than assaults, but I don't mean the actual technique of running on it. All motorless treadmills have a, learning <laughs> have a learning curve since you're controlling the pace and intensity because the belt adjusts to you as you propel it versus a motorized treadmill where the motor is controlling everything. That being said, manual treadmills are fairly intuitive and once you get used to them, they mimic natural running a little better than a motorized because it's a more fluid experience. You simply run faster or slower and the belt responds to you. There's no looking down and pressing buttons. What I mean is with the Blitz, it takes a little more physical effort to move the belt. And I mean that even at the lowest resistance level. And I think that's from a combination of things. The belt weighs a little bit more because the base of these, it's got an aluminum slat that's then covered in rubber versus a plastic base and then that's coated in rubber. The inclinal angle of the belt is gonna factor in some. You can see a little bit of the difference there. That's gonna force you to pick up your legs a bit more, which is useful for sled pushes and sprinting, but it does make you feel like you're running uphill a little bit. And I'm sure the flywheel and magnetic resistance plays a bit of a role as well. All of that adds up to this creating brutal workouts. You kind of have to look at it from the perspective of wanting a treadmill that does more than slowly drain your will to live. Look how miserable I looked when I tried running my first mile on this thing. I think it was something like a 12 minute pace, which was humbling, but I did learn a few things. One, I'm horribly out of shape, and two, high school and college me would have bullied this version of myself. <laughs> nice pace, bro. <laughs> yeah, Dude, good shut one. Up. And three, if you're buying this for long form cardio, it might be the wrong purchase because with assaults, it's much easier to keep this belt moving, whereas the Blitz really torches your legs. That's not to say you can't bang out 10 miles on this thing, but I couldn't because as much as I love staring at walls, I don't think I have the mental or apparently physical toughness to do so, but I do think that this belt design and base resistance is intentional. This is a treadmill I would look at if I was looking for my cardio piece to be, well, more than a cardio piece with the ability to easily adjust, easily adjust the magnetic resistance to six different levels, you can get pretty creative with what you can do with this thing. And believe me, I tried some weird stuff on it, but as entertaining as it is to watch me try, it's a lot more, let's say, visually interesting when Winnie does. And it's the changeable resistance and front handles that make this an intriguing product. The major appeal to me with this was the ability to use it as a sled. Since it's winter up here, I haven't been able to use my sled in months, so I've been using this instead. And I have to say, it performed better than I would have thought. It obviously can't do everything a sled does. It can't do harness pulls on it or use it like a wheelbarrow. Well, I mean, I guess you could if you're really desperate to justify your purchase, but I wouldn't recommend it. But it does great with a lot of other sled type movements like 
backwards walks and pushes, sidesteps and karaoke's, which is where I wish the belt was maybe a tiny bit wider. You can do various pushes at different levels. And really there's quite a few others that I'll try to sprinkle into the B-rolls as we go. It's not gonna mimic a fully loaded prowler, but this thing will definitely kick your ass. Though I kind of wish the handle was in a little bit of a different position. It's just that my arms are so huge that it's gotten in the way, you know, a few times, but it's really not much of an issue. I will say if you don't have interest in this thing as a sled or it's changeable resistance functionality, I'm not sure I'd buy it, but you could still use it for a lot of other things like, uh, <sighs> <coughs> yeah. Who needs dumbbells when you have a treadmill? Or you can run on it in like different ways. For example, walking, uh, jogging, slower or faster jogging. It, uh, it does actually work really well for fartleks and interval training, which I found was one of its strengths because with the weight of the belt and the incline of it, it forces me to really engage my glutes, hammies, and calves. During those types of workouts, my legs were on fire. And you could probably make the argument that while it takes more effort to run on, that might make your workouts more efficient and save you time. I also think this one's a little bit better for sprinting, but I have to admit, it's not something I do a whole lot on these because I have a slight fear of losing control and that becoming the reason I'm internet famous. The reason sprints are a bit easier on the blitz, well, easier is the wrong way to put it, they're bordering on death because it takes a lot of power and effort to keep that belt moving at those speeds, but it's easier in that on assaults, I feel cramped as I swing my arms and move towards the front of the machine because of the, the supports there. But with the blitz, you've got a little bit more space because of how it's opened up and sled up for sled up, set up for sled pushes. I tried everything I could think of on this thing and even tried streamlining the process a bit because the worst part about reviewing these things is you have to run, but eh, that didn't work very well. But I will say it's responsive. The belt moves very smoothly and the build quality is better. Not only because of the belt, but the upper frame being metal makes it much more stable, which makes sense because you need to be able to push on it. But even the little touches like an actual rubber step versus plastic makes a difference. The packaging was really well done, just to ignore the nicks and scratches. Those are because I'm really intelligent and left the arms leaning up against the garage door, then forgot, and then opened the door multiple times. But at least uh, assembly is a joke. You just have to bolt the handles on. It doesn't mean I don't have my complaints. The nicest thing I'll say about this console is, and it's functional, but at this price, it's really just unimpressive. It's got your typical functions like intervals and tracking time and distance and whatever else you'd pretty much expect, but it's honestly lacking for the price. For example, there's no Bluetooth connectivity, but they are working on an upgraded model. I'm just not sure if that's gonna be an additional cost or not. It's also louder than assaults. Not that I'd call it loud, but side by side, it's a noticeable difference. But that probably has to do with this having twice the bearings to guide the belt, which is another testament to that improved build quality. Actually, while I'm complaining, there's no phone or bottle holder, which seems insane on a treadmill. Again, they're working on an attachment, but it really seems like an odd oversight for something like this. One thing I know a lot of people are gonna ask is, why are these so expensive? And here's my answer. I don't know. They all seem very pricey for what they are, but against others I've mentioned, or options from Zebex or companies like Trueform, they're all fairly in line with price. And most of those, like these, are imported, though Trueform's trainer is actually made like just down the road from me. Bells has always been a budget equipment company, but after touring their headquarters and interviewing the owner, it seems like they're trying to expand into a broader market, and this to me feels like a commercial product, and I say that with it side by side uh, with Assault. I think this is better made and more versatile, which is why I'll be selling that one. That is after Winnie and I finish a running video that we're currently working on together, so if you want to see that, you better hit subscribe. Thank you to our Patreons, links in the description, and check out this video here if you wanna see me in more cardio hell. 
If you have any comments or questions, whatever, let me know in the description or, you know, and I'm done with this. I've been doing this too long. <laughs>